Hey everybody, welcome to Full Length Fridays. I'm Lieberman, as always. We've got three emails to read, uh, but real quick before we get started, I just wanted to address the changes that have gone on on this channel this week. A lot of you have been very, very supportive about the move to shorter edited videos. Some of you aren't happy with the change. I understand. It was something that I've been wrestling with for a few months. Uh, these videos doing four, four like 20 minute videos every single day where I'm answering difficult questions in one take without any edits is an incredibly draining and intimidating process. There are some days where I sit down to make four videos and I can only get through one because it's freaking hard to get that vulnerable. It's not something that comes easily to anyone, especially me. Um, so I found it a little bit easier this week to make these shorter videos, um, to edit them. I think that the message is still clear, maybe even clearer because I don't repeat myself over and over. Uh, I know that a lot of people miss the vulnerability and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, which is why we're doing full length Fridays. These unedited normal videos, I can do one of these a week and not feel overwhelmed um, and still get to answer more of your emails. Uh, also, just put it out there, the shorter videos are more likely to attract new people to this channel. Not that I don't love the people that are already here. You guys are the greatest. You're why I'm here at all. But I would like to grow my audience. It's a natural part of it. And I hope that you understand. Um, it's not a decision that I reached easily. It's not one that I wanted to make. But it's something that I think is ultimately going to be better uh, for all of us going forward. And uh, I hope that you can respect it. Now, we've got three emails today. I want to get started. <clears throat> the first email is from a Lieber friend uh, from Norway. He writes, I'm in desperate need of help. I live in Norway and in about four weeks, I am once again going to have to decide which career path I wish to proceed with. Three years ago, I thought I wanted to be a chef. So I used all the money I had saved up and went to study. Long story short, I regretted it since the first day. I realized very quickly that I wanted to be a musician, very cheesy, I know, and have since that day been actively writing songs. I learned to sing and play the piano. Three years later, I am once again at a crossroads. I can either study to be a doctor or I can say darn it all and put all of my time into music while keeping my side job at a local gas station. I love doing music, don't get me wrong, but all my friends tell me I should rather go be a doctor because musician isn't a stable job and not as well respected. Can you help me out? Uh, okay, Libra friend, first of all, fuck respect. Fuck respect. Who gives a shit? Live the life that you want to live. Whatever's going to make you happy, whatever's going to make you feel comfortable and secure and feel like you have a purpose in life, that's what you should be doing. I don't give a fuck. People will never, there are people who will never respect what I do, no matter whether or not I get to help people or entertain people or whatever, um, but they will never see a YouTuber as a real job. Uh, and in some ways it isn't, in some ways it is. I'm an entertainer, I'm a producer, I'm a writer, I'm an editor. I wear a lot of hats to make one thing. Um, if you want to be a musician, there's nothing wrong with that. And you can be a musician. Um, but the argument that you're offering me, be a doctor or put all your time into music while keeping a side job at a gas station is kind of flawed. Because here's the deal. To be a doctor, you have to give a shit. And I know that there are plenty of doctors who, who don't or are lazy or whatever, but if you do go to medical school, know that that will be your life for a few years. And then when you become a doctor, that will be your life. You're gonna be busy. You're going to be working with patients. You're gonna be working full time. You might be able to play music sometimes as a hobby but you'll never be you'll never be a touring musician, a quote unquote successful musician. However, very few people ever become a working musician, a touring musician, a successful musician. If you want to play music for your entire life, if that's really what you're passionate about, if you can put your all into it, that's stellar and I'm sure you'll become very good and you'll write some songs that are awesome, you might never be able to make good money doing it. And that's something you have to be okay with. There's nothing wrong with that. There are plenty of people who commit their lives to that and some people would laugh at them or talk badly about them. 
I wouldn't. Those are people who are living their dream and refuse to do anything else. That's amazing. But know that if that's what you want to do with your life and not just something you want to do during your life or while you're alive, it's going to require a level of dedication and a level of risk taking that you may not have considered. And I want to make sure that you're aware that being a working musician is hard. It doesn't pay well unless you're in that rarefied circle. Um, and uh, it's going to take a lot of time and training and a lot of hits and misses. You could get probably a better job than the job in your gas station and work your way towards being a professional musician. There are plenty of people who do. I have friends who are sound engineers. I have friends who uh, help manage stores or, you know, are waiters and waitresses and live off of tips and are working at music or acting or whatever. Um, working full time or working, you know, almost full time, being able to support yourself with the money that you're making makes your music dream possible. So I would say, you know, you don't have... Do you want to be a doctor? It sounds like you're only going to go be a doctor because people are telling you to be a doctor, which is just as misguided and just as big of a waste of money, if not a much bigger one, than your stint in culinary school. Why would you ever, ever go back to college for something you don't want to do when you already made that mistake? That sounds like a step backwards. Don't do that. The key to the key to this like work life balance or work passion balance is you need to be able to find a job that you can tolerate doing so that it can facilitate pursuit of your dreams what is something that you can tolerate doing that you don't mind doing 40 hours a week so that during the remaining how many hours are in a week uh 240 minus 72 uh, is 170, 168 hours a week. So if, if you can work 40 hours a week so that you can spend the remaining 118 sleeping and doing music, do it. I don't think that being a doctor is going to be that thing personally, but if that is something that you want to do, then go and do it. It doesn't sound like it here, but if that's what you want, do it. I hope that helps. Okay. Uh, this email is from Michael. Hey Matt, my name is Michael. I actually wrote you a while back in an email regarding still being in love with my ex-girlfriend slash best friend. You gave me some great advice on the topic and I ended up getting enough courage to come out and tell her how I feel. That's great. Unfortunately, she's not interested in trying again with our relationship. That's probably gonna happen with most people who are in this situation. Luckily, she was still so cool about it. She talked me through all my feelings so she could understand how I felt. She wanted to absolutely remain friends. She's even going to be my date at senior prom. So now I need to know, now I know I need to move on. How do I do that? Any advice you would have would be greatly appreciated. Have a great day. Okay, Michael, don't take this the wrong way. Um, but the first, the last thing that you should do if you're trying to get over someone is take them to prom with you. Holy shit, buddy. Why would you do that? Your ex-girlfriend, who you still have feelings for, is going to be your platonic date at the most overhyped high school date romance event of ever. Why would you do that to yourself? That sounds torturous. If you can do that without it feeling torturous, go ahead. But me personally, I would be suffering if that were me. Um, what should you do to get over her? Uh, I mean, the best advice that I can give you, as much as it sucks because she's also your best friend, is you need to put some distance between the two of you. Um, it's great that you have closure and I can't, I can't overstate how impressed and amazed I am that you were able to go in there and get the closure that you needed and have her know exactly how you felt because so very few people get to do that or try to do that in their lives um, and that she reacted positively to it. That's awesome. However, now that you have closure, you need to put some distance between the two of you so that you can find space to grow into your life alone without her as an influence, without her as a reminder 
of your feelings. Um, people, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I don't know, are very out of sight, out of mind, typically. Uh, when someone's right in front of you, you're thinking about them all the time. When they're not right in front of you, you they start to slowly fade away from your consciousness and new things can bubble up. So I would say spend less time together. The best way to get over someone is to fall for someone else. I'm not saying run out and try to bang a bunch of people or date a bunch of people or you need to try to fall in love right now. Like, girl, pretty, I'm, I'm going to fall in love with her. I'm going to make myself do it. That's not possible. Uh, what would be best, in my opinion, is to just try to be as social as you can um, in situations that don't involve her and hopefully something will organically happen. The less time you spend together, the more time you start you you spend doing things without her, not just being alone in your room or at home or whatever, but actively doing stuff without her, creating fresh memories without her, the easier it will be for those feelings to not shrivel and die, but certainly shrink or get compartmentalized in a back part of your brain. There are still women in my life who I was involved with or who I had crushes on and nothing ever happened, who I definitely, if I thought about it hard enough, I still have feelings for or would still like to try someday, but that's not my life. I also know that, you know, it didn't work out for one reason or another, and those are good reasons. There's nothing wrong with those reasons. Um, as you get older and you fall in love more and you get your heart broken or break hearts more, um, you find it easier. You develop the skill of being able to pull apart lust, love, and reason and examine them all clinically. Being able to look at someone for whom you are drawn to and recognize I don't recognize if we were together, it would be awful. Our personalities do not mix well. She's mean sometimes. Uh, we don't have the same kind of social idea of what's fun socially. She's a party girl. I'm a stay at home guy. Um, she has ideologies that I don't agree with, whatever it is. I still want to have sex with this person. I still feel like I should be with her all the time. I'm just drawn to her. I just want more, 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 more. But because I can separate it, I know what it is, and I'm able to either be put in a situation where I can say, uh, I'm not looking for a relationship with you. Um, I am attracted to you, and see what she says to that, or just avoid it entirely, because I know that it won't end well. Um, it's a skill that you're just gonna have to develop over time and hopefully this answer helped you a bit. And uh, someone else, I got two people in the same week who sent me essentially the same question. So hopefully, hopefully that helps you guys out. All right, final email of the day, yeah. Okay, this email's from a Libra friend, he writes, Hi Matt, I recently found your personal channel and I've been so grateful for a lot of the videos as they address many problems I've been dealing with. I even took the plunge and started therapy for depression. That's fantastic, congratulations. The question I have is, is it, still, is it okay to still be unemployed at 19? I'm currently preparing for my first year of university and I've only ever had a part-time job which lasted three months, uh, which I quit due to anxiety. Friends and family are encouraging me to find work over the summer, but my anxiety and depression have been scaring me away from the idea and all in all making me feel worse about myself for not being able to function like a normal person. I honestly don't think I can handle working a job while trying to fix myself. Is it just a, is it a case of just manning up and doing it for the money or do you think it is okay to remain jobless but be less stressed out? I, it's always hard hearing friends talk about having work and me about being in the state that I am. Um, I really appreciate how caring you are to your community. And one day, if you have a call to action, I will be sure to contribute whatever I can. Well, thank you, Libra friend, for saying that. Um, when I was 19, I had a couple of part-time jobs. Um, and I was doing internships in the summer. But by the time I turned 20, 
I had quit both, I had quit my jobs and I didn't have another internship um, when I was 21. And I was unemployed for a few years until I came to Los Angeles. There's nothing inherently wrong with being unemployed as long as all of your needs are met. Um, that you have a roof over your head, that you're able to feed yourself, that you're able to clothe yourself, etc., etc. There's nothing inherently wrong with being unemployed. However, it seems to me, and and don't don't get me wrong, I'm I'm not trying to bully you in any way. It seems to me that you may that you're running from the idea of having a job because the last time you had one, it made you too anxious. Um, and there's nothing wrong with anxiety. Everyone has anxiety. You feel bad because you feel like other people don't have the same anxiety as you do about working. It's not, that's not true. There are plenty of people, people who I've answered emails from, who are freaked out by working, freaked out by jobs, who uh, like you are afraid of not being normal. Let me say it for the billionth time, there is no such thing as normal. Yeah, the majority of people do some things. But guess what? Everyone is different. Everyone is who they are supposed to be. There is no normal. There is only boring. There is only the thing that everybody else does. Why would anyone want to only do the things that everyone else does? Out of fear of being alone? Probably. The fact is, there's nothing wrong inherently with being unemployed. What I'm concerned about is the fact that uh, you're afraid to go and work. And uh, I mean, when I had my first jobs, I was anxious. I'd never worked a day in my life. And, and I felt so underprepared for life. I, when I was in college, more than anything, I admired my friends who had worked since they were a teenager, who had worked since they were 14, 15, and had been supporting themselves and were paying their own way for, through college, because th those were skills that I didn't have and that I was afraid I would never have. Because, you know, I was kind of raised with the belief that I was naive, that I was a fuck up, um, and that uh, if I didn't have a certain pedigree of job, I would be considered a failure. These are not, it, it, this is not necessarily how my parents ever intended me to feel, nor were they cruel in any way, but it is how I felt because of what was said and done. And that's neither here nor there. Um, my first job was really fucking easy. I mean, I was dealing with a lot of people, but I was the night cashier for a convenience store in the dormitory of my college. So I was the only person there um, from, I, I got there at 6 p.m., everyone else left at 8 p.m., and it was just me and the customers, and I was basically running this store. And there was a lot to keep track of, and I was worried about fucking up, um, and I, was, I would get anxious when the place was just filled to the brim with people. But the beauty of a job like that, or most jobs, is that it's mostly just mindless, repetitive tasks. Um, people get stressed out, yes, by work, but it's also very freeing when you get into that flow where you're just doing the steps over and over and over, passing time, adrenaline coursing through your veins as you fucking go, 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 go. Are you anxious about all jobs or just jobs with people? Jobs that are, you know, at an office where maybe you have to take that work home with you? Because here's, here's, here's the deal. And, and this maybe might free you a little bit from your existential angst here. Is that the worst thing that could happen to you at your job is you lose the job. The job that you currently don't have. So... What's the risk in getting a job? The worst thing that could happen is you don't have the job anymore. The same thing that you did for yourself at your last job. You quit because you didn't like doing it. So fucking what's wrong with just if you want to get a job, I think you could handle it. I think that you could handle the anxiety. I think that you and your therapist could work together to build a framework for yourself so that you aren't as stressed, you aren't as anxious. Uh, uh, a set of guidelines to follow to manage stress. Um, I've been doing something recently. 
uh, in the mornings before I go to work. I meditate for 10 minutes. I got an app on my phone that does a guided meditation and it gets me calm and focused and it allows me to go into work and immediately plug in because my problem has always been with focus um, and when I'm distracted with too much stimuli, hours pass before I do any work. It's fucking, you can't do that when you have a job that you know pays you a lot and is important and that you wanna keep can't do that. Um, the good news is for, for you, it's a summer job that you don't really care about. So who gives a shit if you don't keep it? You're not going to keep it. You're going away to university. So that's, that's basically, I, I guess that's really, that's my advice to you is um, if you want a job, go get a job. The worst thing that could happen is you lose the job that you currently don't have and you'll just be you again. If you don't want a job, you don't need to get a job. It does not, it is not a mark of your self-worth. It does not mean that you're a coward or that you're lazy. Um, you're working on yourself and that's work that a lot of people who have jobs will never do. If you wanna wait to find a job until you feel like you have a better handle on who you are and your depression, that's fine by me. I think your therapist would also agree with me and would say that that makes sense. There's nothing wrong with putting those emotional and spiritual needs first if you're able to get by without a job. Um, so that's all of the, all of my perspective on that and hopefully you've found an answer somewhere within that. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what you thought about it, how you feel. I know that change is scary. Um, but I hope that you understand why and that it's ultimately a good thing. There are people like you who want to watch 20 minute videos. Most people don't. And, and frankly, it's hard to make 20 minute videos. It's exhausting. And I already work for another channel. It's just, it's just the reality of it. Guys, you know, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and, and say, oh, it's great, you know, and it's, it's purely about blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of factors, and these videos are very personal to me. It matters to me that I make them. There are days when videos don't show up because they are hard to make sometimes. When I'm dealing with personal shit like I was um, last week and the week before, it's hard to sit down and get centered and be able to give good perspective and advice, reasoned criticism to strangers. It's hard. It's a lot easier when you're able to stop and think, or when you're able to shoot for only 10 minutes instead of 20. In fact, I spend more time on, these, on each email than I would in the ordinary videos. Anyway, guys, I'm, I'm rambling on for way too long. I hope that you join the Google Hangout this weekend. Uh, we're gonna do it a little earlier this weekend, we're gonna, we're gonna do it uh, at 1 p.m. I've already tweeted about this. Uh, actually, no, let's not do 1 p.m. Let's do, let's do noon, because I've got something that I've gotta do on Saturday. So let's call it noon Pacific Standard Time on Saturday, uh, and I'll tweet about that. All right, guys, I love you. You're my Libra friends. Without you guys, there is no this. So thank you and thank you for understanding. I hope that you had a great week and that you have a wonderful weekend. And if I don't see you tomorrow, I'll see you Monday. Goodbye.